Proteins, so integral to everyday function, have long been considered a loyal ally. However, not all proteins are good proteins. Meet Bessie, a nice, lovable cow. Peaceful, tranquil. But wait, now look at Bessie. Wild, crazy, you could even say mad. The source of this madness stems from a cause that for years remained a mystery to scientists. Impaired brain function, memory changes, personality changes, a decline in intellectual function, and problems with movement are all characteristic symptoms of neurodegenerative disorder. The ubiquitous nature of these symptoms in neurodegenerative disease meant that it would take far more than just symptoms to link many unusual diseases to one unlikely cause. Scrapey, Kiru, Mad Cow all share the common symptoms associated with neurodegenerative disease. However, all of these diseases shared an element previously unobserved in cases of neurodegenerative disorder, namely the ability to infect. These infections were somewhat unusual in that the immune system seemed completely unaware of the presence of an unwelcome guest. No cytokines, inflammatory response, or white blood cells came forth to save the body from the devastating effects of disease. The nature of infectivity was equally as controversial. As worried Brits observed, sometimes Scrapey seems to pass from sheep to sheep within a flock, which suggests that Scrapey is contagious. This belief prompted the German veterinarian J.G. Leopold to suggest that any animal suffering from scrapie should be quickly separated and slaughtered to avoid infecting the remainder of the flock. However, if scrapie is contagious, why do sick and healthy sheep sometimes live together and even rub against one another without passing on the disease? Many centuries would pass before science could produce satisfactory answers to these many questions. In the 1950s, this unusual pattern of infection reappeared, this time in a different host. In the highlands of New Guinea, among the people known as the Foray tribe, an unusual disease was wreaking havoc upon the native population. After initially becoming unable to walk, victims of this disease lost the ability to swallow or chew. Drastic weight loss would inevitably lead to death. The Foray people called this disease Kuru, which means trembling in fear. The leading scientists researching the matter, Daniel Carton Gajusik and Michael Appus, were frustrated in attempts to understand the disease because although the epidemiology was consistent with infection, the pathology showed no evidence of inflammation. The mode of transmission also remained a mystery. Toxins, hereditary, even dietary reasons were considered as possible causes. Other diseases had similar dead ends. The first major breakthrough was recognizing the similar dead ends found in each case. It was not until 1959 when William Hadlow first suggested that there might be some common thread tying these seemingly unrelated diseases together. It was upon observing the brain pathologies of samples of Scrapey and Kuru that Hadlow first postulated that these diseases might in fact be the same. A few years later, Scientists identified the cannibalistic practices of the Foray tribe as responsible for transmission of the disease. Studies following thereafter demonstrated that many of the diseases could be transferred to other animals and species by a transfer of CNS material. In addition to these findings, studies done by Tikva Alper in the late 60s showed Scrapey's infective agent was resistant to ionization and UV radiation. These results were extremely interesting as the only compounds that could survive such treatment could be very small DNA viruses, membrane fragments, polysaccharides, or proteins. Alper, along with John Stanley Griffith, was the first to propose that these diseases could possibly be caused by an infectious protein agent. However, it was not until 1982 that Stanley Prusner was able to isolate the protein and coin the term prion. In 1985, scientists identified the prion protein gene and discovered that uninfected people produce a normal form of the prion protein. In the late 80s, outbreaks of mad cow in the UK brought the issue of prions to public attention. As of April 2005, 155 people had died from creutzfeldt jakob disease as a result of contaminated meat. Capable of infection via acquired, familial, or sporadic means, the nature of the prion and its mode of infectivity make it an extremely difficult pathogen to protect against, even today.
Here we have the normal protein, CRP, found throughout the body of normal healthy mammals. The normal function of this protein is unclear, as knockout studies in mice have shown no significant change in behavior or survival. Recent studies have suggested that CRP may have a role in repopulating hematopoietic stem cells during the process of self-renewal. However, whatever benefit the normal PIP CRP may serve is nothing compared to the damage that a mutated CRP can do inside the mammalian central nervous system. Mutations in the genetic code cause this protein to fold irregularly, giving rise to a new population of protease-resistant proteins that is capable of converting healthy proteins into infectious isomers. The infectious isoform of the protein contains almost all the same elements as its healthy counterpart. However, studies have shown that this infectious Prion protein's final conformational structure contains many more beta sheets when compared to their original healthy protein. This increase in beta sheets seemingly provides the mutant protein with catalytic and aggregating properties not seen in the healthy protein. The catalytic properties of the mutant protein appear to be the mechanism by which prion protein infects from one source to another. We see here that the infectious isomer on the left and the healthy spot prion protein on the right. One model for prion replication, as demonstrated here, is the heterodimer model. When the infectious isomer comes into contact with a healthy PRP, the other protein begins to change. Studies into the kinetics of this proposed mechanism have suggested that the infectious product must have some thermodynamic advantage over the correctly folded protein, as the conversion from the healthy to the infectious form occurs independently of any enzyme-mediated catalysis. As we see here, healthy CRP reforms in the image of its maker, the infectious prion protein. Once this transformation is complete, the two infectious prions continue replication using other healthy proteins. As we see here, the new shape of the mutant pro prion protein al allows a very close interaction between the two molecules, leading to the formation of aggregates or clumps. The formation of plaques leads to cell death and tissue damage, resulting in the appearance of disease symptoms. The incubation period for this disease is very long. However, once symptoms appear, the disease progresses rapidly. The range of sy symptoms seen in victims demonstrates that the amyloid plaque disrupts a wide range of neuronal activity. This sheep has scraping. Large patches of fur have been rubbed off due to a constant feeling of itch. The animal also walks with an abnormal gait, demonstrating the impact that plaque formation can have on motor coordination. Amyloid plaque buildups can occur almost anywhere in the CNS. Interestingly, it is the type of prion infection present in the host that determines where a majority of amyloid plaques will be localized in the brain. In the case of Kuru, amyloid plaque formation seems to be preferentially localized to the cerebellum. Muscle weakness, loss of coordination, tremors, and inappropriate episodes of laughter or crying can result from this type of infection. In the case of scrapie, mad cow, and chronic wasting, amyloid plaques are concentrated in the brainstem. This can result in motor difficulties, drooling, difficulty swallowing, and weight loss. Of the prion-related disorders, creutzfeldt jakob disease is by far the most common amongst humans. In this case, a majority of the amyloid plaques are found in the cerebral cortex. This means that creutzfeldt jakob has a wide range of symptoms that can include dementia, muscle twitching, memory loss, and even vision problems. Fatal familial insomnia resides mostly in the thalamus. Plaque formation in this area results in disruption of the sleep-wake cycle, leading to coma and eventually death. The characterization of prion diseases and their mode of transmission have prompted interest in the theory that similar mechanisms may play a role in other neurodegenerative disorders, such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. Neuroscientist Larry Walker at Emory University in Atlanta explored this idea in Alzheimer's disease. He used a genetically engineered mouse susceptible to Alzheimer's and injected 
extracts from the brains of human Alzheimer's patients into one side of the mouse's brain. Within months, the mouse developed plaque made up of beta amyloid peptide, a characteristic of Alzheimer's disease, exclusively on the injected side of the brain. This suggests that some component of the Alzheimer's human brain extract could be inducing the disease in the mouse. Further work done by Walker, as well as re researchers at the University of Tübingen in Germany, seems to pinpoint the beta amyloid protein in the human brain extract as the mode of transmission. When brain extract is treated with antibodies to remove the beta amyloid, the brain extract was not able to induce plaque formation in mice upon injection. Other work done by Mark Diamond at Washington School of Medicine has demonstrated that other proteins involved in Alzheimer's can behave in the same way. As shown in this fluorescent microscopy, misfolded tau, the protein that causes neurofibrillary tangles in patients with Alzheimer's and dementia, can be taken up by cultured mouse cells and subsequently induce normally folded tau to misfold and aggregate. Scientists of UC San Diego have found a similar story in Parkinson's disease in which alpha synuclein can propagate from cell to cell and cause the formation of Lewy bodies in healthy cells. In conducting experiments with cultured rat and mouse cells, they found that alpha synuclein induces cell death in neurons and neuronal stem cells as the cells take up the protein and form aggregates. Similarly, two research groups found that fetal stem cells implanted into the brain of Parkinson's patients contained alpha synuclein deposits when examining the same cells after the patient's death. The deposition of protein in such young cells is extremely uncharacteristic and certainly points to a cell-to-cell -cell transmission of alpha synuclein. The evidence of protein clusters propagating from cell to cell may help to explain why some neurodegenerative diseases seem to spread throughout the brain in a characteristic pattern. In addition, while the, these rather classic neurodegenerative diseases are certainly not contagious from individual to individual, the apparent cell to cell transmission of protein, similar to that of prions, definitely sparks some new ideas in treating the progression of these diseases. If aggregates jump from cell to cell, instead of building up individually in each cell as traditionally proposed, this provides the opportunity to use antibodies or other molecules to prevent the alleged infectious protein from entering a new cell. Thus, prions have not only sparked controversy on the traditional modes of infection, but have changed the way we think about diseases with similar pathological and degenerative properties.